Hey guys, welcome back. So I wanted to take a moment and discuss a very commonly misused node by beginners, and that is event tick. So if we hit play here, you guys can see that I have two actors right now. One's running off of event tick, that's this red actor here, and the other one is running off of a timer set to go um, to execute every 0 0.05 seconds. So this would run 20 times in a second, and the other one off of tick will be based on your frame rate, which right now is around 40 something. So this is almost twice as much. The tick is going off twice as much as the timer. And as you can see, there's not that much difference between the number of line traces that we're getting for gameplay, for example. If I pause it right here, we can take a look at our player character. And if all you wanted to do was tell if your player character was hit and you're using a line trace for that, you can see this timer, it's going to say that your player got hit five times as it sweeps by. And if we look over here on the actor that's doing tick, this is closer to about eight, nine, ten times. Again, this is going to depend on your frame rate. Now with a line trace, it may not seem like that big of a deal. This really doesn't take up that much um, processing power. But people have put all kinds of crazy things on tick. I've seen things like this running off of tick, and this, and even this running off of tick. Now, when you get to things like that, you're definitely going to take a hit with your performance. Line traces, not so much. But even here, you can see that this number is twice as big um, as the one that's running off of a timer, and you're really not getting that many, that much. Um, difference in your gameplay. So if all you want to know is if the player got hit in the leg by a bullet and you want to make him walk slower, take some health off, you can probably do that off of a timer. But if you really want to know, for example, if he got hit in the lateral collateral ligament versus the medial collateral ligament, or if this bullet right here just grazed his gastrocnemius, then sure, maybe you want to use tick for that. But other than that, there's really not very many uses for tick. <clears throat> One thing that tick is good for, though, we'll stop here. And if we go into our actors, I will have them actually move. Tick is good for movement, because if you don't use tick, lots of movements can appear choppy. So I'm going to show you these two actors, one running off of tick and the other one running off of the um, timer here, and this is set to 0 0.05 seconds. Now that's a pretty quick timer, so you won't notice too much difference. But if you look, you will see that the green ball is kind of a little bit more choppy. So the one running off of tick runs very smoothly, and the one running off of this timer, you see it kind of lurches forward. Now, the smaller you make this delay, like if we put 0 0.01, the closer it becomes to running like a tick. So now you can see, not even fast enough to get there, um, the green ball will now run quite smoothly. So that would be an appropriate use for tick. Other appropriate uses are things like physics, when you want to simulate friction, drag, changes in momentum. Those things might need to be updated every frame. Um, same thing with player animations. Things that don't need to be run off of tick are stuff like updating your health, updating inventory items, and you know other things like that, ammo. Those can all be done with event calls, overlaps, hits, and function calls. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.